Is anyone out there? Well, if you are, it's time to make a purchase because the holidays are upon us and everyone knows that our collections make the best, unique gift at great pricing. For you horror fans, check out the all-new Horror 500 Gigabyte Collection and also the new 2 terabyte Sci-Fi and Horror Collection. You ask, where do I go to get these fantastic collections? <laughs> well, you go to oldtimeradiodvd.com, of course. And while you're there, sign up for Nostalgia USA Digital Magazine with over 15 hours of audio and video on every issue, all free. Where you ask? Well, oldtimeradiodvd.com, of course. Visit today. Order today. oldtimeradiodvd.com. Trust me, you'll be glad you did. When children run around the streets with toy pistols yelling, bang, bang, you're dead, they call it cops and robbers. But when grown-ups do it, it's Pioneer Day in Wistful Vista. And here, all dressed up for the celebration, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. Do I look as silly as I feel in this calico dress and sunbonnet, McGee? Matter of fact, kiddo, you look real pretty. Uh -huh. Regular prairie flower. Hey, where's my sheriff's badge? I gotta have my sheriff... Oh, oh, here it is, here it is. I hope those horse pistols aren't really loaded, McGee. <laughs> hey, you're nice to have hanging around, <coughs> but I'd rather you did it with your feet on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I just got blank cartridges in them. <laughs> gotta do a lot of shooting when they hold up the bank this afternoon. When who holds up the bank? Oh, didn't I tell you? We're reenacting the big bank holdup of 1897. When Bart Younger and his gang held up the Ranchers National and got away with 20000 in gold and kissed the banker's daughter on the way out. Did they chase the robbers? Uh, the banker's daughter did. <laughs> yeah, she chased him all over the territory, caught him and made him marry her. After that, he went around the country lecturing on how crime doesn't pay. <laughs> you see, she was kind of... Huh? Why do you keep leaning over forward like that? I can't help it. These high heel boots got me off balance. <laughs> Have to swing my guns a little farther behind, I guess. <laughs> Tell me more about this holdup. Uh, well, who's doing it? More Toops and Wallace Wimple are going to play the parts of Bart Younger and his brother. Yeah? I meet them in the street as they come out, and I shoot them down dead. Oh. You see, I... Come in, stranger. Come in to shooting or come in to smiling. The welcome you ask for is the welcome you get. Well, rope me for a doggie if it ain't old Doc Gamble. Howdy, Doc. Come in and set a spell, Sawbones. Ma, shove that pile of bar traps away from the fire so as Doc can hunker down and warm his britches. <laughs> oh, stop it, you Saturday matinee cowhand. You're about as western as the Fulton Fish Market. <laughs> I'm willing to go along with this Pioneer Day malarkey for 24 hours, but I'm developing an allergy to blue jeans and bow legs. Even legitimate bow legs, like yours. <laughs> Did you know he was going to reenact the bank holdup this afternoon, Doctor? More Toops and Wallace Wimpler are going to play Bart Younger and his brother, Doc. I meet him outside the bank and I shoot him down dead. Going to be newsreels took up it and everything. Oh, fine. Uh, yeah. Fine. You'll be so busy mugging into the cameras they can walk off with the whole bank. You probably even fancied yourself getting a movie contract out of this. Well, now that sure would be nice, wouldn't it, Paul? Might stick a big wad of chewing tobacco in your face and tell him you're Billy the Cod. Oh, <laughs> can say is you better have plenty 45 caliber cork plugs ready today, Sawbones. <laughs> when Sheriff McGee starts throwing lead, every Boy Scout compass in town is going to be pining straight at the cemetery. <laughs> well, I don't know who first thought up this crackpot idea of Pioneer Day, rum-dum, but it's paying off handsomely for me. I've treated three cases of spur burns, Two items of bar stool bursitis. <laughs> and right now I've got a sachet down to the hotel for a strange case of a man with two hearts. Heavenly days, two hearts. Two hearts, two clubs, and one diamond. 
Both the hearts were aces. Ooh. Thing like that can shorten a man's life considerably. <laughs> so long now, Jimson Weed. <laughs> oh, Great old Doc hasn't got any romance in the system. He thinks this Pioneer Day celebration is kind of childish. Well, I'm inclined to agree with him, dearie. I know I'll be glad to get out of this long calico skirt. Why? <laughs> Every time I look down and can't find my feet, I get panicky. Yeah. <laughs> when do we go downtown? Any time now. The bank hold up a sketch of the start for any minute. Get ready to crouch and draw, partner. That knock ain't familiar. <laughs> Stand in front of me, Ma, so as I can draw a bead on the varmints over your shoulder. Use both guns then, Pa. I always wanted my ears pierced for earrings. <laughs> Come in. Well, what do you know? Mr. Old Timer. Hello there, kid. Well, <laughs> I'm glad to see you again, old timer. I hear you've been in the Navy all this time. In the CBs, Johnny. That's the men's department of the Navy. <laughs> well, you're just in time to celebrate Pioneer Day in Wistful Vista, Mr. Old Timer. Pioneer Day, eh? Yeah. Wondered why everybody was wearing them high heel boots and sombreros. Minds me when I first come to this town nine to fifty years ago. Come out with a Lewis and Clark expedition. Horse feathers. The Lewis and Clark expedition was in 1803. I says Lewis and Clark, Johnny. Huh? I come out with my brother Lewis to Clark in his grocery store. <laughs> well, I guess you were sort of a pioneer here at that, weren't you, Mr. Oldtimer? Daughter, I was one of the founders of the town. I'd have been here even earlier, but I caught the wrong schooner. Mine had a Mickey in it. <laughs> well, how'd you like the Navy, Oldtimer, frankly? Frankly, Johnny... I could take it or leave it. I could take it just about as long as I did and leave it with a glad cry. <laughs> and about all the bossing around from gold braid, I could stand. <laughs> you mean commissioned officers? No, I mean them blonde gals around the dock. Oh. <laughs> you know me, kids. I'm a man's man till a woman shows up. Then I'm a girl's boy. <laughs> Any girl's boy. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, whatever became of your girl, Bessie? You... Bessie? <laughs> Bessie. Bessie, Bessie. Uh, was she the one with the big bay window that she used to wave to the fellers out of? <laughs> oh, uh, was Bessie the little one that always carried a bunch of flowers so she could thumb her nose gay at you when you... Oh, shucks, kids. I don't remember Bessie. <laughs> well, you always were getting engaged and unengaged to different ones, Mr. Oldtimer. You've broken more hearts than the man who cuts the celery at the Why Pay More cafeteria. <laughs> That's pretty good, daughter, but that ain't the way I hear it. <laughs> It's going to be a long time before you can get a new car, ain't it? <laughs> yep, says Tullifiller. But it's a great thing for the shoe industry. The pedestrians live so much longer. <laughs> See you later, kid. <laughs> It looks like a Roy Rogers movie set. Yeah, and some of us characters are just as quick on the trigger, too. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Molly, Molly, Molly. Get a load of old lady Carstairs in the Pioneer costume. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Ain't she a dish? Makes her look a little stout, doesn't it? Ooh. And if you make any remarks about a pig in a poke bonnet, I... Oh, no, no, no. I never thought of anything making... Well, any... hello there, Mrs. Carstairs. How do you do, Mrs. McGee and Mr. McGee? Never mind the Mr. Ma'am. I ain't no dude. You're addressing the sheriff of this here town. Homestead and hereabouts, are ye? Why, sure, Paul. The Carstairs is as right early pioneers hereabouts, wasn't they, Miss Carstairs? Oh, yes. <laughs> Grandpapa was a favorite with the Indians. He wore two you know, which made scalping him a very simple operation. 
<laughs> In the Cherokee Indian language, he was known as Old Cabin Keep Getting New Roots. <laughs> Never caught them much to Redskins myself, ma'am. Even now, a coat of sunburn makes me reach for my Remington. <laughs> Paul, tell Miss Carstairs about the time you and Kit Carson met the Apaches at Sidewinder Gulch. I don't recollect any such story, Ma. It ain't a matter of memory, Paul. It's a matter of imagination. <laughs> oh. oh, sure it is. Well, sir, ma'am... It was just about sundown in the foothills of the superstitions in the heart of the Apache country. Me and Kit Carson was sitting around the water hole when all of a sudden, nothing happened. <laughs> that made us suspicious. So we looked around and there surrounding us on all sides was 200 Apaches. Good heavens, Mr. McGee, how interesting. What'd you do, Paul? Kill them all? No. Nope. Kit started talking sign language to him. Sign language? Yep. First, Kit says, there's a Ford in your future. <laughs> and the Indian swips right back with, standard stations have clean restrooms. <laughs> says, grade crossing ahead. And the engine says, ever tried Johnson's wax on floors and furniture? <laughs> well, sir, we knew we had, they had it there. <laughs> on account of we didn't have any floors or furniture, so we clumb onto our cayuses and rid back to Fort Dodge. You know, I always wondered what was meant by sign language. Oh, Paul was expert at it, Miss Carstairs. Him and Wild Bill board Hickox. You gotta be going now? Uh, yes, yes, if you excuse me. I, uh, must be getting down to the tailor shop. Having some clothes made, Millicent? Uh, not for myself, my dear. I'm having a little pair of blue jeans made for my fox terrier. Blue jeans for your fox terrier? What's the idea, Carsty? Oh, it's just in the spirit of Pioneer Day, Mr. McGee. Huh? I thought it would be appropriate if his wagon was covered. <laughs> well, nice to see you. Good day. <laughs> oh, brother, if his wagon was covered... <laughs> Did you ever hear a worse joke? No, but I bet we will in the next three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, just where are we going, McGee? Down to the Bonton department store. Now, that's across the street from the bank. You see, in the old days, the Bonton was the last chance saloon. Real rugged joint. Oh? Now, when the bank hold-up starts, I step out from the door and I start throwing lead right at him, see? Then the bank... Heavenly days, what's that? <laughs> it's across the street there. Guy in the frock coat and checkered vest in the back of that buckboard. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. He's probably selling Princess Mahula's marble snake oil for man and peace. Come on, let's go over there. Oh, I folks, step right up to the tailgate while I expound the wonders of this magic product. Absolutely and positively the greatest discovery of the modern age. Wilcox! What on earth is he selling as if I couldn't guess? Hurry, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Step right up with your money in your hand. Each and every one of you will want a container of this marvelous labor-saving preparation. The scientific discovery that makes your life worth living and your home worth living in. Go ahead and ask the man, Grandma. <laughs> Is it good for corn, son? <laughs> I'm glad you asked me that, Mother. This amazing product is wonderful for corns, bunions, and housemaid's meat. It brings such relief from housework that such small ailments are completely forgotten in the joy of living. <laughs> Get your container of Johnson's Wax before we're sold out, folks. Try it on your floors, furniture, woodwork, harness and saddles, rifle, butts, and luggage. See how it protects, preserves, and saves you hours of housework. 
And now, while I pass among you with this marvelous invention, and remember only nine containers to a customer today, <laughs> Hambone will play a few musical gems on his old banjo. Hambone, if you please. Yeah. Just a minute, sir. Yes. Get the horses ready, Hambone. What's the matter, Sheriff? Well, Paul wants to know if and you got yourself a peddling license for this here medicine show, stranger. License, ma'am? You hear it, correct, stranger. Failing you got a license, I got to take you to the calaboose. I represent the law hereabouts. We don't aim to have no fly-by-night drummers taking trade from the local merchants. We aim to build a little church in this here valley. <laughs> Come now, son. Do I see your license or do you see our hoose gal? I'll see you later. Let's go, Hambone. Hit that <laughs> Why, you was aiming kind of high, weren't you, Paul? <laughs> yes, Ma didn't want to wing me, youngin'. He might grow up to be a useful citizen yet. <laughs> what time do you think it is? Well, I can't tell, Paul. Can't see the sun on account of this here sunbonnet. Yep. Often thought of getting me a pocket watch. The Chucks, they're all made way back east, and they got different time back there. <laughs> oh, gee, look, here comes Mr. Wimple. Hello, Mr. Wimple. Oh, hi, Wimp. Hello, folks. <laughs> Ma, isn't this Pioneer Day exciting? Yeah, you betcha. You all set to reenact the bank hold-up, Wimp? Oh, yes, indeed, Mr. McGee. Good. Ma Toops and I were going to dash up on our horses, oh. but we're coming in his Buick instead because horses always make me sneeze. <laughs> We're both going to wear bananas over our faces, you know. Bandanas, Mr. Wimple. No, bananas, Mrs. McGee. We throw the skins down to foil to shoot. <laughs> Sweetie Face going to be watching the scene, Wimp? I'm sure I don't know, Mr. McGee. She may be too tired from her dancing to come downtown. Dancing, Mr. Wimple? She taking a dancing lesson? Well... I suppose you might call it that, Mrs. McGee. One of the power lines fell down in that windstorm last night, and Sweetie Face tried to pick it up this morning. Oh. When I left, she was still hanging on to it and dancing around like everything. Oh, my, my gosh, Wimp, she might be electrocuted that way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is she still uh, mistreating you, Mr. Wimple? Oh, we have our little moments, Mrs. McGee. She gets impulsive, and I lose my temper, I'm afraid. Oh. Last night, after one of our arguments, I went downtown and bought five pounds of raw meat. Well, good for you, Wimp. Did you eat it all? Oh, no. I put it on my eye, Mr. McGee. <laughs> well, goodbye now. I'll see you at the bank. <laughs> these days, Mr. Wimple is going to hold turn it, on... Ma, hold it. Look yonder. There comes Panaman Perry Bodkin and his pitch pipe posse. Must be a trail in somebody. Here they come. Ride them hard. Chase it. for the gunplay to start, isn't it, McGee? Yeah, and I hope those newsreel guys are on their toes, too. I told them to focus on my left profile. I told them to focus on my left profile on account of because, well, howdy there, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, more curtsy to the mayor. Howdy, Your Honor. You're as welcome beside us on branded steer. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. McGee. Hello, McGee. All set for the bank hold up the trivia? Got my holsters tied down and my trigger <laughs> fingers itching. <laughs> you sound very authentic as a sheriff, McGee. Yes, didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> uh, had any trouble so far today? Nary a mic, Mr. Mayor. Folks been giving old two-gun McGee a wide berth. Needs one, too, the way he rolls around in his sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <coughs> incidentally. <laughs> incidentally, McGee... 
How did you get appointed sheriff for today, anyway? How do you mean? What do you mean, how did I get appointed? I thought up this whole bank robbery stunt, didn't I? Who should ought to have been observing it better than me? Okay. Okay. I was merely asking, McGee. Oh. I guess you were the one who remembered that the James boys once held up this bank. Oh, no, no, you, uh, not the James boys, Mr. Mayor. No. Bart Younger it was. Yeah. Bart Younger and his brother, Much. <laughs> Much was the older younger. <laughs> How was that again, McGee? I says Bart younger was the younger younger. Much was older. Much older? <laughs> yeah, much. <laughs> you say that the older younger was much younger? Yeah. Well, if the older younger was much younger. How could the younger younger have been much? I mean, older. I mean, if the older... Well, you see, it's like this, Your Honor. Bart, Bart the younger younger, yeah. was quite respectable at first. He was even an elder in the church. Yeah, yeah. Just the younger younger was an elder. The elder younger... Oh, wait. <laughs> wait a minute, please. Now, let me get this straight. Oh, of course. Uh, what don't you understand, Mr. Mayor? <laughs> Any of it. You say there were two younger, Bart and Much. Exactly. Much was the older younger. The younger younger was the elder. Well, if the younger younger was an elder younger, how did the older elder, a uh, much younger, I mean, if Bart was not an elder, simply older than the younger younger, which is to say that the elder... Ah, you're getting it now. Go on. This doesn't make sense. Just because a man is an elder doesn't make an older younger. Uh, I mean, the younger brother, much, much was younger than older. Uh, younger. Younger than the elder. The older was the... It was the man. It was... It, it, he, he, he. <laughs> <laughs> McGee. <laughs> will, uh, will you excuse me? I, I wish to make a telephone call. Oh, important, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Yes. I want to call Abbott and Costello. What? <laughs> I want to know who's on first. <laughs> confused as he does, ever got to be mayor. Oh, well, the trivia, uh, he's a simple soul. He just don't... Oh, my gosh, time for the holdup. Look, there's the newsreel cameras. Everything is set. Shall I wait here with you? Sure. We're just using blank cartridges now, Molly. One side there, please, folks. One side. I'm playing the sheriff. Oh, there goes the robbers into the bank. Yeah, they'll be lucky to get out with the money they got on them. Can't fill your fountain pen in there without three co-signers. Now, take it easy, folks. Take it easy. Give me elbow room. Now, when I come out, I'm a coming out of shooting. Get him, Pa. Here they come. Who'd you say them bandits was? More Toops and Wally Wimple. Well, don't look like either one of them was Mr. Wimple to me. Too big in the... Oh, there we go. Got them shooting irons, you varmints. It's Sheriff McGee talking to you. Got them weapons, I tell you. I'm the law in these parts, and I'm in. Oh, heavenly days. Ooh. That was a real bullet, McGee. They broke the bomb town window. Oh, oh, oh. $20,000. Oh, no, license place. It's a clean getaway. Hey, who thought of this dumb stunt anyway? I name him McGee, the little twerp that played the sheriff. Why they all the way? Hey, come on, Molly. Come on, Molly. Let's get out of here. I'm going to get home and form a possum. You mean a possum? No, a possum. I'm going to play dead for a few <laughs> Telling what... McGee, did you hear what happened after the robbery? No, I've been afraid to even stick my head out the door far enough to get the evening paper. What happened? Well, a sweetie face found Mr. Wimple and Mr. Toops tied up in Wimple's garage. Yeah? They told her what happened, and she chased the robbers on her motorcycle and caught them at the county line. Ooh, did she bring them back? Yeah, but not alive. You mean sweetie face? 
Oh, but that's murder. She can't do that. Taking the law into her own hands like that? Why, that's terrible. That's... McGee. Huh? McGee, don't get so excited. It's just a radio show. Oh. Oh, was that what it was? <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> with